This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Sway in the morning. We're going to keep going, man. This is a rap theme show today. Let's go. I know we have the politicians from the, the president himself to Valerie Jarrett from the um, Obama administration to Michelle Obama on here because I was at the White House last night. You, you keep saying last night like you was a few hours ago. Oh, it was really ago. literally a few hours ago. ago. I just came the, straight yeah. from the White House to work. So right. but go to my Facebook. Uh, <laughs> you'll be able to see some of the video. I was video uh, streaming live from inside the White House. Yo, this is <laughs> And informing. Yeah, I was like walking around holding my phone at a certain angle so they couldn't tell. You could have gotten tackled. That's Snowden. Yeah. Yeah, man. But uh, well, actually, all the uh, security, the Secret Service, they all knew me. So it was like we knew uh, each other. Did like, you just... Not in a stunt way. They all listened to the show. That's you still in a stunt yeah, way. Yeah. No, well, me, it's a stunt for all me. of us. They knew it's a stunt for the citizens. It was like citizens walking up like, yo, I'm a citizen. Okay. But let me see your ID. <laughs> 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 you know. Uh, but, yeah, I'm ex- I was excited to get back because uh, my homie is here this morning. And um, last time we saw each other, we were, where, where, where were we, San Diego? Yeah, I can't remember. I don't remember. Was I think that it was the in Cali, though, yeah. It was in the concert, uh, the uh, J. Cole, uh, when I flew out to uh, talk with YG and J. Cole and Big Sean. And, oh, yeah. Okay, and I, I just did that, that on my own because right. I just went, I hadn't seen J. Cole live in a long time. And I was like, yo, man, I got to get out of work and just go get immersed back uh, in the trenches mm-hmm. and had a good time. And I bumped into a very integral part of um, Dreamville and this fortress that they've been building um, over the years mm-hmm. and they 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 made a good recruitment <laughs> you know they they you know sometimes you got to recruit the veterans in you <laughs> know to know help to lay that them. foundation and um one of the most important parts of music is the music itself and mm-hmm. i was just running down a list of this producer's uh accolades if you will <laughs> and looking at some of the songs one of my favorite J. Cole songs was um, Who Dat when he first mm. came out. Yep. And um, he co-produced on that. Um, yeah. Wrong or Right by DMX and Bizarre Royale. Wow. Remember oh, that? You remember that one? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, yo, he yeah, did yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate That's it. Yeah, Bizarre's my man. Shout uh, out to Bizarre. Uh, <laughs> what, what was it? Crooked Smile. Crooked Smile, yeah. With J. Cole. Yes. Uh, did that too. The uh, Y remix, uh, Jada, Nas, Jada yeah. Piss. Not all of that. Yeah, yeah. He did that too. Right, I'm giving <laughs> you more that. Death. Don't um, me <laughs> What else? Uh, 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 wow. I put that on my, yeah, well, the, the list goes on and on. <laughs> uh, the Let Nas Down yeah. song. Mm-hmm. Big uh, record. J. Cole did that too. Uh, Fight Music Project with Joe Budden. He worked on. This dude is. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered have to be the one and only elite appreciate is here, man. Elite, elite, elite. elite. What's up, man? What's How up, you doing, man? brother? That's good, man. Thank you for having me. I no, appreciate man. it. We, 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 we talked about it, and um, and we just, every now and then, we'll tag each other. And, yeah. and if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, it may not happen tomorrow or next week, but eventually it has to happen or I, I won't be able to finish life. <laughs> Let's keep God your finish word. it. Yeah, I try to keep my word. Keep and Lead is in town this week and I asked him to come play some beats for our Friday Cypher. That's dope. Yes, and, sir. And, and then also you guys put out the project too, right? Yes, Revenge of the Dreamers 2. It's out now. Revenge of the Dreamers 2. Yes. And um, what I love about Dreamville is that you guys don't, you don't, conform mm-hmm. you it's almost like it's all this chaos that happens around you but you guys got tunnel vision in a sense that you know where you're going yeah mm. like you know what i mean and even the way uh you guys promote your projects where j cola email people directly yeah who does that right like right. go on twitter y'all need you, who got an email and, and then email yeah. the music fuck the bloggers the right. business yeah. all that let me get it straight to the people yeah. matter of fact dog if you're at home tomorrow I'm going to come to your house <laughs> exactly. and play the album in your living room. Yeah. Well, I think one of the most important things now is like, you know, people are buying music because they connect with you as a person and what you stand yeah. for. So like the most important thing I think I've learned just watching Cole and how he operates is to connect with your fans and people because if they feel like they're a part of it, yeah. they're going to support you. You know what I mean? If they don't, if they feel like you're just like some separated entity that they're like looking up at, like that you're untouchable. They're not going to probably pay 
money to to buy your album when they can just stream it for free. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. like I think they really have to feel a, a personal connection with you now to actually like support. And you see that with Cole. You see that? Do you guys have like as a collective? Do y'all do brainstorming meetings or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you know we have our group chats and everything where everybody's just throwing around ideas and stuff. Yeah, uh-huh. definitely for sure. That's important because the team has to always you know. Um, brainstorm and come up with ideas and you know get everything everybody on the same page and that's how some of the best ideas come around people just throwing out ideas you know then do you still get nervous because after the ideas go back and forth and i'm sure some disagreements mm-hmm. and then now it's time to get in the studio do you feel like well damn now i got the music part i hope my beat so you still have that feeling as an oh, as yeah. a artist I'm, and a producer i mean i think if you don't feel that way then like right. i don't know something's wrong something because wrong. like yeah even if you feel like you've accomplished something to this point, I think you always want the next step. You want to grow. You know, mm-hmm. you want to you want to mm-hmm. feel like, um, you know, there's always more to do. So I feel like whenever I'm going into the studio to work, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge every mm-hmm. time, you know. Yeah, so, it, yeah. of course, you know, you always want to you want to you want to improve upon your last thing at all times. So mm-hmm. that always, you know. It's, it's a it's a positive pressure that you create for yourself. Mm, positive like pressure. Challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Positive challenge. Pressure. Challenge. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. How much of those convos are um, critical of the industry? Because, you know, Cole, he's a very elusive character. He's a big time thinker. That's why everyone loves him. When he comes out with music, it seems completely opposite what everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. And I always feel like that stems from probably like some three hour mind fuck session. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, I don't know. I think... Um, a lot of it is just, I think, his genuine, like, desire to do these things. You know what I mean? Like, he'll just kind of... I think he's just not scared to do what he wants to do at mm-hmm. the end of the day. I don't know if it, it's even a matter of, like, these people are doing this, so I don't want to do that right. as, mu- as much as it's him being like, this is what I want to do, so yeah. I'm just going to do this and I don't care, you know? What, what are your ultimate goals? Because uh, you, you, you've been putting it... You've been putting in work for just a rough, I mean, drag on. Yeah, what drag on fire, was my first Fireman. Fireman, Fireman wow. joint you did with drag that's on. Yo, that's <laughs> one of the dopest records. Oh, wow. Man, that, and that's, a, that's a standout. Um, mm. Two-part question. Uh, I wonder, what are your ultimate goals in all of this? Like, is it just to continue to produce? And is, are there artists, other artists outside of Dreamville that you... Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, building this thing with Dreamville is just continuing to build it is definitely just a goal because... Mm-hmm. You know, I think I think one thing that we stand for and that I really appreciate being a part of is that, like, um, you know, we try to, like, inspire people through music and, and provide a, a positive message, you know what I mean, yeah. which I think is needed. And it's like, that's something I'm proud to be a part of and want to continue to be a part of, you know, just as, as far as, um, you know, doing records like Cricket Smile, where we can kind of promote that type of positivity to people. Like, that's just continuing that, like, yeah. really is, is a goal of mine. But um, as far as, like, artists and stuff, I actually have an artist sign in my production company his name is Sean McVary, and he's not hip hop. He's yeah. actually um, like indie pop. Sean McVary. Sean McVary. Sean McVary. Yeah, and he's okay. come. Uh, his first EP that I produced is coming in January. Okay. So yeah, you send know. that to us. We'll I put will. It on the yeah, A&R will. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you, you guys just signed two new artists too over yeah, here. Yeah, Luke, Luke and Ari, Ari Lennox. Lennox yeah? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so who is it now? Boss Omen. Who else? Omen. Luke? Boss Kaz. Omen. Cause Luke. Ari Lennox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second part of the question, J. Cole, one of the things that makes him unique mm-hmm. is um, his ability to produce as well. For sure. But, you know, his uh, his producing has taken an evolution. You know, yeah. he's not the same p- producer he was four or five years ago. Sure. But what, were you able to offer him some techniques or oh, insight? Yeah. What kind of things did you were you able to that he was open to learning from you? I mean, I've known as a producer. Yeah, I've known Cole since we were like young. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like we we connected real early, like back when I was doing Rough Rider stuff way before he was signed. So like we would always help each other. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like when it came to production and like um, I'm sure you know I, I definitely. I mean, he's been in, you know, in sessions with me since uh-huh. the beginning. So, like, I'm sure he's picked up a lot of stuff. But I picked up stuff from him, what too, What you picked honestly. up from him? That was what I was going to ask you. Man, a lot. Because, yeah. you know, I'm, Cole's been in with No ID, Timberland, yeah. Yeah. Um, Pharrell, oh, right. like, all these yeah. people. So, you know, yeah. he picks up stuff from then, and I'll pick up stuff from then. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll pick his brand. Like, all right, so, you know, what did they say? What, what's going You know, and it's like, man, some of the stuff I picked up from him, I think, he helped me to, to think less because I was mm. a very cerebral producer in the beginning. Like I would pick apart things and um, I was a perfectionist like yeah. to a crazy degree where I would spend like months on a beat. You know what I mean? Like where it was a little bit too much. And mm-hmm. Cole was more of like the type to get in and kind of just be free and loose with it. 
and I think there's a balance that you have to have. Mm -hmm. And I think he helped. I think we probably helped each other in that in that yeah. um, respect, where he saw some of my meticulousness mm -hmm. and picked up some of that, and I saw some of his ability to just go with the flow, mm -hmm. and I picked up some of that. You That's know? what's up. Ying and Yang, leaders yeah. here, man. Producer <laughs> extraordinaire. Are you working on a uh, Kendrick Cole project? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, not, not yet. I mean, I don't know. You know, I can't. I don't. I haven't done anything yet, so I don't know. You okay. Know? But right. hopefully that happens, though. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, if that happens. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna play this song, Folgers Crystals, which yes. is, is off the project, right? <laughs> Revenge of the Dreamers, uh, yes. two. Um, man, when I think of Folgers Crystals, when you remember when you were younger, had to be and they mm -hmm. said a Folgers commercials. Yeah. And, wake right? you up like Folgers. Which, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I go deeper than that. Um, <laughs> why, why, why Folgers Crystals? What's the, that's the interesting. Oh, it's one. a line, and it's just like from a line, and you have to hear the line in, okay. in the song. You'll see. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah. play it, and then the leader's gonna be our producer today. Oh. Um, for the Friday Cypher. So we got Cool America out of Atlanta coming by. Hollywood Holt from the Treated Crew is coming by. My man Just is coming by. He was a getting the game artist. Yeah. So we got a couple of spitters that's going to be some hyenas. Ladies hyenas! And gentlemen. <laughs> All right, here it is, man. Folgers Crystal, Sway in the Morning, Shade 4 5. It's Sway in the Morning, only from Shade 45. Kimmel.